we are going to discuss trigonometric functions of real numbers. So what has happened so far is we have defined the trig functions of an angle measure, whether that be using radians or degrees, uh, when we plug into what we plug into the trig function is an angle measure. And now we want to discuss well, what happens um, when we plug in a real number. Now, what is the reason for this? So the purpose of this is going to be prepping to graph the six trigonometric functions, which will come next. Now, as a little bit of an algebra review, remember that functions, if you have f of x is equal to y, which is the most common way of denoting a function notation, the x, which is the input here, is a real number. Right, so when we have the rectangular coordinate system, the horizontal line is the x-axis and the vertical line is the y-axis. So you input the x and you output a y, uh, but in this situation, right, the x is a real number. So currently, consider sine of theta. The theta is an angle measure, not a real number. So what we need to do here is we need to define um, a trig function when a real number is plugged in. So this definition here, we're going to let t denote a real number. Now remember that if you have the real number line here, and 0 would be in the middle, then we're going to let t come here. Or if it was negative, it would go in the opposite direction. And then we would have this length right here, right, from 0 to t, whether it be in the positive direction or whether it be in the negative direction. So what we want to do now is we want to actually graph this inside of a circle. So if I put the rectangular coordinate system in here, what I want to do is imagine that that real number line from 0 to 2 t is like a string. Okay, so you're holding one end of the string, the zero in one hand, and the other end, which is t in another hand. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to wrap this around the circle. So I'm going to place zero, the end of the string on the left, I'm going to place that on the positive x-axis on the circle. Now this should seem familiar because where do we start a standard position angle? Oh, we started on the positive x-axis. So, right, we want to kind of define this so that it matches what we already know. And we'll get to that later. Now, depending on how long t is, it would take maybe just a little bit to wrap around the circle. It could take many wrappings around the circle. Hypothetically, right, I'm just going to put the ending here in quadrant 2 and say that this is the length of my t. And so because this is a point in the rectangular coordinate system, wherever t is, right, it doesn't matter how long it took you to wrap it around the circle, there is a point because it's in the rectangular coordinate system, right? So this point would obviously have the coordinates x, comma, y. In this case, it would be in quadrant 2, but it could be anywhere on the circle. Now, this circle, however, is a very special type of circle. This circle is what we call a unit circle. And a unit circle is very easily defined. It is a circle that has radius 1, all right? So no matter where you take from the center, the center to any point on the circle is 1, okay? So a unit circle has radius of 1. Now, using this, we define the following six trigonometric functions when t is plugged in. We define sine of t as the y-coordinate of the point. We define cosine of t as the x-coordinate. Then once you have those two, the four will follow, okay? Because tangent is sine over cosine, so that will give you y over x. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so that would be 1 over y. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, which will be 1 over x. And cotangent is cosine over sine, which will give you x over y. Now, keep in mind that normally, right, when you define sine, it's over r. But in this situation, when you have y over r, the r is 1. So it's assumed, right? You don't need to write the over 1 anymore. We don't do that. It's just purely y. So what's the key here to take away is that the sine is the y value and the cosine is the x value of the point. The rest, again, if you know the sine and cosine, the rest will follow. So let's do an example. We want to find the six trigonometric functions given that p, 
the following point is a point corresponding to t on the unit circle. So if you know the definitions, there's not a lot of work involved, right? That means that sine of t will be the y-coordinate, which will be 4 fifths. Cosine of t will be the x-coordinate, which will be negative 3 fifths. And then we can do cosecant next, because all we got to do is a little flipperoo here. And then secant, we do a little flip of cosine. And then tangent is going to be the sine over the cosine, negative. But dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of the bottom. The fives cancel, and it gives you negative 4 thirds. And then we have cotangent of t, which then we can just take the reciprocal of tangent. And there we have it. And so it makes sense, right? So where is the, this point? The x is negative. The y is positive, so we are actually in quadrant 2. So let's make sure every all of our signs make sense. Sine and cosecant are positive, and cosine, secant, tangent, and cotangent are all negative, as it should be in quadrant 2. And there we will have it. So if you know the definition, pretty simple here. Now, how do we relate what we learn about the angle measures to the actual real numbers? So let's draw that num real number again. So, right, we, we wrapped it around. And by the way, if the real number was negative, you would wrap it in the clockwise direction, right? I, the, I picked my t hypothetically to be in the positive direction. So I wrapped it counterclockwise, just like everything we already know. Now, if I pick a point on the unit circle, this point has an angle that's associated to it. I can graph it like this, right? It has a standard position angle, and this would be my theta. And this would be my t. But in the previous material, we have learned that there's a special word for t when it wraps around the circle, and it's called the arc length. Now, we have an arc length formula. It is s is equal to r theta, where theta is in radians. So let's remember that because we have to stick to that. But s here is t, right? t is the arc length. So that means that t is equal to r theta. But this is in the unit circle. r is equal to 1. So we get that t is equal to theta. And if it was clockwise, they would both be negative. Counterclockwise, I'm sorry, yeah, negative. Counterclockwise, they would both be positive. So what does that mean for us? This is great news. Because that means that we can treat our real number t exactly how we have treated our angle measures. So we can interchange them as we wish. However, keep in mind, that this angle is in radians. So when we are graphing and our number has to be a real number, we can only think about the radian measures, okay? We cannot think about the degree measure when we are going to graph our six trigonometric functions. And we'll get that a little bit later. So we want to take everything we have learned and we want to use it uh, in terms of the real number and the unit circle. So the first thing we're gonna do here is I want to place the 45, 45, 90 degree triangle into this unit circle. Now, the whole purpose of the unit circle here is that once I apply it and I do it, it's going to make everything that we have learned into one organized diagram, all right? So first, let's remember what the 45, 45, 90 triangle look like. So we have a triangle here. It's an isosceles triangle, where if it's a right triangle, if the angle is 45, the other one must be 45 for them to add up to 180. And then we found out that when we do the unit, it was one, one, and then by the Pythagorean theorem, it was the square root of two. Now, if I want to place this angle into the unit circle, that means that I'm going to want to place it as such. Now, how do I know that it's directly in the middle of quadrant one? Well, because my angle is 45 degrees, right? Here it is. And my triangle would come down as such. Now, remember that in a unit circle, the radius is one. So the way that this is currently graphed, can I place this triangle in here? And the answer is no, you cannot. The reason for that is because currently, the hypotenuse is a square root of two, but I need it to be one 
how can I place it in there? It would be too big, right? Right now, the triangle would be here. Right, so it would extend where this thing right here would be the square root of 2, but I need it to be 1. Well, that's a very easy fix, right? Because what we have learned about triangles and the basic definition of trig functions is that it doesn't matter how large you make the triangle, the ratios are always the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this triangle and divide all sides by the square root of 2. And I can do that because I'm doing it to all the sides. So the ratios will stay the same, right? This, when you take the ratios, everything will be the same. So I'm going to draw it over here, a little bit bigger. I'm going to have 45 here. And then I'm going to have 1 over the square root of 2, 1 over the square root of 2, and then 1 here, which is exactly what I was trying to achieve, right? So that I could place it in there. So what I'm going to have now is you can have this rationalized, which is more likely how you're going to see it, as we've seen square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, and now I can place the triangle in there, okay? So what we want to discuss is now that I'm placing this triangle in there, I want to look at the sides, right? So I have here square root of 2 over 2, this is going to be 1 as it should be, and this is going to be the square root of 2 over 2, and I want to look at the point that it's creating on the circle. Well, remember that a point is how far you've gone in the x direction, left and right, and how far you've gone up and down in the y direction. So in the x direction, I have gone this much. So I've gone radical 2 over 2. So my x coordinate is square root of 2 over 2. Oh, that's a horrible 2. And y, how much have I gone up and down? Well, I've gone up, up and down, radical 2 over 2. So the point on the unit circle corresponding to an angle of 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2 comma radical 2 over 2. And as we know, on the unit circle, sine is the y coordinate and cosine is the x coordinate. So this matches with everything we know, right? The sine of 45 is radical 2 over 2. The cosine of 45 is radical 2 over 2. Okay, let's do it now for 30, 60, 90. So let's draw our 30, 60, 90 triangle. So remember to achieve this, we took an equilateral triangle, we cut it in half, which this stated two, this was cut in half, and by the Pythagorean theorem, this was the square root of three. So once again, if we take this, and we wanna place it in there, we can't place it right now Imagine first, right, because you're going to have to do 30 and 60 differently, right, because we know that 30 is a third of the way in quadrant 1 and 60 is two-thirds of the way in. So you're going to have to place the 30 degrees 1 and then separately you will have to place the 60 degrees. It will be the same triangle, but you'll be looking at it in two different ways. So first let me look at 60 degrees because my triangle is kind of already set up for that. So again, I can't place it right now because the the radius would have to be 2 and the radius is 1. Easy fix. Divide all sides by 2. So that will give me the triangle that looks like this. This is 60, 30. So I will have 1 half at the bottom, radical 3 over 2 at the bottom, and a 1 here. Now, what I want you to notice and what's important to notice is that this is the exact same triangle as if I flip it, if I want to put the 30 at the bottom here, well, the hypotenuse would still be 1, but then this would be square root of 3 over 2, and this would be 1 half, right? If you change the angles, then you have to change the sides, right? Because 1 half is opposite of 30, but radical 3 over 2 is the opposite of 60. So that has to stay the same if you rotate the triangle. Right? So I just rotated it here. So if I want to place the 30 degrees in, What I'm going to have is at the bottom, I'm going to have the square root of 3 over 2. So that will be my x coordinate. And my y coordinate will be 1 half, right? Because here I've gone 1 half. It's the same thing. If I look at the 60 degree 1, right? And so this is the 60 now. Left and right, I've gone 1 half, which would be my x coordinate. And up and down, I've gone square root of 3 over 2. But this is already what we know, right? Because if you take a look at 30, 
Well, the cosine of 30 should be the x coordinate, which it is. It's square root of 3 over 2. Everything follows from what we have already learned. It's just a way to organize all the angles into one place.